suicide. Pretty grim stuff. Welcome back to the third hour of our program. Uh, this new report, this, you know, this is the consequence of Reaganomics. I'll just say this straight up and let all the conservatives who are listening right now uh, let their heads explode. And now I'm going to back it up. The suicide numbers, the, su- the suicide rate among middle-aged Americans climbed 28% in the last 10 years. 28%. It was most pronounced, it jumped 40% among white men and women in that age group. Now, speculation is that the reason why it didn't go up as much, in fact, it went up very little for African Americans and Hispanics, is that, that they were already not doing as well economically, and they had better support networks through churches and communities and tight families as a consequence of being generally lower on the socioeconomic ladder. And so this, there's this kind of middle age, middle income uh, bubble that people find themselves in where they don't have a, a network of friends, they're not part of a church or a group, and, they, and, and then things fall apart economically. White, middle-aged whites, 35 to 64 years old, 40% increase in suicide rate. Overall, 28% increase in suicide rate. People ages 35 to 64 account for 57% of all suicides in the United States. In 2010, this became the 10th leading cause of death. And what's interesting is that given that this is not returning Iraq war veterans, they're kicking up our suicide rate. But this is not returning Iraq and Afghanistan veterans uh, the, because, you know, they're not 35 to 64 years old. They tend to be younger people. The West and the South had the highest rates. And one factor may be cultural differences in the willingness to seek help during tough times. It's also harder to find counseling and mental health services in the South and the poor parts of the West. This from a report by Mike Stobe, or Stobe, S-T-O-B-B-E, in uh, Huffington Post. Suicide rate rises among middle-aged in the U.S., according to the C. And these are statistics from the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. Now, why would I say this is Reaganomics causing this? Or just, a, you know, the bad economy, the Bush, the Bush recession, whatever you want to call it. I think, I think it's Reaganomics. Well, I go back to this piece. I've been talking about this since we started this show 10 years ago. On, on the 18th of September, 2002, the BBC News World Edition, it's still on their website. You can easily Google it. The headline is More Suicides Under Conservative Rule, BBC 2002. You can find it. And I'll just share a few sentences out of it. The suicide rate increases under conservative governments, research suggests. Australian scientists found the suicide rate in that country increased significantly when a conservative government was in power, and an analysis of figures in the United Kingdom seems to suggest a similar trend. Now, they were looking at suicide rates from 1901 to 1998. That's virtually an entire century. And then they said, you know, there's things that we need to do to factor out of this. So the researchers took into account periods of drought and World War II because of their economic and psychological effect. Suicide rates were actually higher during periods of drought and lower during World War II, but they factored those out so that they could get good, clean numbers looking at just conservative versus liberal running the government. After adjusting for these factors, writes the BBC... And this is not a bylined piece. This is the BBC writing this. This is not an op-ed. This is a news story. But after adjusting for these factors, the figures clearly showed the highest rates of suicide occurred when both conservative state and federal governments were in power. This is they're looking at the entire 20th century. Conversely, The lowest rates of suicide occurred when both state and federal governments were both labor. In other words, liberals, Democrats, what we would call Democrats. Middle-aged and older people were most at risk. 
When the conservatives ruled both state and federal governments, men were 17% more likely to commit suicide than when labor was in power. Women were 40% more likely to kill themselves. The authors argue that conservative rule traditionally implies a less interventionist and more market-oriented policy than labor rule. This may make people feel more detached from society, they added. I mean, they're, they're not really sure exactly why this is. The lead researcher, Professor Richard Taylor at the University of Sydney, told BBC News Online, quote, We think it may be because material conditions in lower socioeconomic groups may be relatively better under labor because of government programs, and there's a perception of greater hope by these groups under labor. There is a strong relationship between socioeconomic status and suicide, end of quote. The original research was published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health. And then they, in a series of accompanying editorials, Dr. Mary Shaw and colleagues from the University of Bristol say the same patterns were evident in England and Wales between 1901 and 2000. Rates have been lower under labor governments and soared under the last conservative regime, which began in 1979 under Margaret Thatcher. They fell under the more moderate John Major regime, and after, and after a slight rise, uh, when Tony Blair came to power, have since fallen again. Now, this was, again, 2002, so you had still had labor in charge. You still had the Democrats, as it were, in charge of the U.K. Overall, they say, just think of this number. The figures suggest that 35,000 people would not have died had the conservatives not been in power between 1901 and 1998. And then they, they literally, they go through, they list every single period the, in who the, you know, 1901 to 1905, suicide rate 101. This was during the Balfour conservative, uh, 1906 to 1910, you know, the Campbell, Bannerman, liberal. So, and, you know, all the way up to 2000, or up to 1998 when the study was concluded. And, and of course, the, uh, the article was published, as I said, in 2002 by the BBC. More suicides under conservative rule. Now, that's the U.K. and Australia during the entire 20th century. We've had conservative rule in the United States. I mean, you could call Bill Clinton a liberal if you want, but basically our economic policies were, you know, Reaganomics was never repudiated. Bill Clinton did not take us back to Lyndon Johnson or to Franklin Roosevelt. He didn't take us back to the Great Society, the New Deal. In fact, he undid parts of the Great Society by ending welfare as we know it. And I don't mean this as an indictment of Bill Clinton. I think he did probably the best he could do, given what he had and what the times were. But basically, uh, the Obama administration and the Clinton administrations have not been New Deal administrations. Reaganomics has been the economic policy of this country ever since 1981. And now we're seeing the rise in suicides. As a, in my opinion, as a consequence of that, I mean, if 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 it, if it, if you can, if the BBC can say, if the BBC can say as a statement of fact that thirty five thousand people wouldn't have died if conservatives had never been elected to run the the British government, you have to wonder how many people would not have taken their own lives had had. Uh, Bill Casey not cut a deal with the Ayatollah to keep the hostages so that Jimmy Carter would lose the election and Ronald Reagan became president in 1980. You just have to wonder. You know, if we'd never tried this experiment of trickle-down economics, of Reaganomics, of supply-side economics, if we'd never tried that experiment, if we had stuck with what worked. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Or another way to put it would be, how many people have the conservatives killed? More heads are exploding. We'll be back. 